There is finally good weather coming. It's actually already arrived. I swear this is better than Christmas. So this week in Farm Theory News, we're doing the weather and we are only doing the weather. I will give you the forecast for the next two weeks for the UK and Ireland. And then I'm gonna take you through how to read a forecast. And I know all of you are gonna think, well, I know how to read a weather forecast, but believe me, it's more confusing than you might think. I will tell you the current forecast while I put a fence up for my cows going out again tomorrow. This joke's gonna get old at some point, but I am literally reporting from the field. Okay, I think that joke's old already. <laughs> so at the start of this week, we had the remnants of the hurricane which hit Florida two weeks ago move across, delivering a deluge of rain. So much rain that my cows have been in the house for the last three days. But now that that weather front has cleared, we have a high pressure system which has filled in behind it over the Atlantic Ocean. So that is gonna bring much more drier and stable weather over the next couple of days, but there will be some showers. Then at the end of this week, we have the tail of a low pressure system, which was pushed north by the high pressure system currently over the Atlantic, which might bring some rain, but it's not going to be terrible. You don't hear that in other weather forecasts. It might bring some rain, but it's not gonna be terrible. <laughs> but next week is where the good news arrives. That high pressure system over the Atlantic is still there, but it has moved further north and it has expanded. And by mid next week, it is going to arrive over the UK. I am so, so relieved and so, so happy about it. So to summarize the farming weather forecast for the next two weeks is get ready for silage. Your cows will finally be able to graze grass again and it's gonna warm up. So your grass is gonna grow again. Technically, this is kind of just a return to normal but that's a big difference to the weather we've had for the last three weeks. So it is exceptionally good news, especially for us poor people living in the west of Northern Ireland. Oh no, that's a really big problem. Sun has went to my head and I thought I could do this in boots. Yeah, the gap I'm trying to fence looks even wetter. Oh, we'll sneak around the side maybe. I just need to make it to the grass without getting my feet wet. Then we'll get back to the weather forecast. Yes, yes. No, no. Oh, it's so wet. Ah! There has been so much rain and I did not factor in, how am I gonna get that off? Oh, this is bad. I'm sinking, I'm sinking, I'm sinking. This is, I got stung by nails. This is peak entertainment. Success. Why did I not wear wellies? There has been so much rain. So much rain, right. Okay, let's climb the fence to get out of this. What a mess. Okay, back across the lake we go. A bit of sunshine makes some difference to how much fun it is farming. I got distracted again. Back to you in the studio, Andrew. Thank you very much, Andrew, for your weather forecast. Now let's get back into the detail of how weather forecasts are generated and how you should read them if you're a farmer. So I have all this information in my head from years of watching videos about how weather forecasting works and trying to figure out the optimal way to predict what weather I'm going to get for my farm. So I have used ChatGPT to write me a two minute script explaining how a weather forecast works. To be honest, I can't believe I haven't thought to use ChatGPT to write me a script until episode six. Expect this to happen a lot more. Scene one, a wide shot of a weather station with instruments like anemometers, barometers, and thermometers. Cut to a close up of these instruments in action. I'm not gonna do the scenes, I'll just read the actual narration. So how does a weather forecast work? Well, it all starts with data collection. Across the globe, weather stations, satellites, and even buoys in the ocean gather data on temperature, humidity, wind speed, and air pressure. This data is then sent to powerful supercomputers where it is processed and analyzed. The computers use complex algorithms to create models of the atmosphere. 
Now here's where it gets interesting. Different models can give different predictions. Some might suggest rain while others might predict sunshine. That is because each model is based on different assumptions and uses slightly different methods to simulate the atmosphere. But meteorologists don't just pick one model at random, they compare them. They look at different factors like recent weather trends, the strengths and weaknesses of each model, and even how certain models have performed in similar situations in the past. How unprofessional to leave my phone unmuted. By combining this analysis with their own experience, meteorologists might blend the outputs of multiple models to create the most accurate forecast possible. They also account for local geography, which can influence how weather patterns develop. Once the forecast is ready, it is shared with you through TV, apps and websites and Farm Theory News, keeping you prepared for whatever the weather has in store. This is actually in the script, by the way. For more cool science content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Oh my goodness, that was such a good script. My days, I am using this from now on. ChatGPT is amazing. I was going to summarize that into farmer speak, but then I realized I should just ask ChatGPT to do it. Could you make this script more farmer friendly? Northern Irish farmer friendly. What is it going to come up with? <laughs> this is so good. Okay, I might have to redo this in Northern Ireland farmer version. Oh my goodness, ChatGPT is amazing. Oh my goodness. I'll just read the intro. How the weather forecast works. The Northern Irish farmer friendly version. Ever wondered how they know whether you'll need your wellies or if it'll be a grand day for drying the hay? Well, the next two minutes, I'll show you how the weather forecast works. <laughs> this is the bit about the supercomputers, okay? except Northern Irish farmer version. All this info gets sent to some big computers where it's crunched through some very clever sums. These computers try to figure out what the weather is going to do next, making something called models. Oh my days, it actually gets better. <laughs> the outro to this is, for more handy tips and a bit of crack, don't forget to like and share. <laughs> Basically, the Northern Irish Farmers version is the dumbed down version. So how is all that relevant? Well, everyone has their own favorite app, their own app or service that they think is more accurate than the rest. And this explains why there is such differences. Sometimes you can check two weather apps and they'll have a different forecast for the next day. And that is just highlighting that the models are uncertain about what's gonna happen and they differ. So if you get a forecast from two or three different weather apps and one is giving sunshine and the other is giving rain, you shouldn't have a lot of confidence in that forecast. However, if you read two or three forecasts and every single one of them is giving blue skies and sunshine, you can be a lot more confident that that's actually going to happen because all of the forecast models are aligning. So that's the general overview of how forecasting works. Now we're going to look at some weather forecasts and I'm going to point out some handy tips and tricks to reading it from a farmer's perspective. So my go-to weather forecasting service is actually the BBC. I do also use the Met Office. They both use the same data but they will often give different forecasts like we explained earlier. They're picking different models um, and for me where I live the BBC is the most accurate. That will not be the same for everyone. So if we look at the symbol forecast, first of all, the one which you should absolutely not be using, but we'll get onto that. The first thing you need to know is when it says that there is going to be rain, it gives you a percentage chance of rain down at the bottom. Now in the UK, that means the percentage chance of getting rain in a given area. It does not mean the percentage of that area that is likely to receive rain. Most people take it to mean the percentage chance of getting some rain, but in the US, for example, it's much more common to be the percentage of an area which might get some rain. So if we go to Thursday morning, for example, I could say there is a 30 to 40% chance that I am going to see some rain. And if you read a 30 to 40% chance of rain, that may well put you off making a big decision like mowing 
your silage. And that is a really good example of why you should never use the symbol forecast if you're a farmer. You need more detail. So on the symbol forecast, it gave an 80% chance of rain on Wednesday morning. And if we look at the weather radar, you will see that there is a large band moving across Northern Ireland from west to east. And I would say I am 100% going to get rain at some point on Wednesday morning. However, if we look at Thursday morning, the symbol forecast told us there was a 40% chance of us receiving rain. But if you look at the actual weather radar, you can see that I am actually very unlikely to see rain on Thursday morning. The radar forecast just gives you so much greater resolution as to where you actually live. And it also does a much better job of telling you how heavy the rainfall is gonna be and how long it is gonna last. So rainfall radar is great for up close forecasts, but if you want to predict further into the future, like for example, one to two weeks ahead, that is where you need to use pressure charts. And again, you can absolutely get a long range forecast from the weather symbols, but what this doesn't get across to you is how certain you can be, how confident you can be that this is actually going to materialize. Whereas when you use pressure charts, you get a much better understanding of how likely the good weather is to actually arrive, or if it's just showing up in the models at a 50-50 chance. So again, sticking to the BBC website, I'm going into the long range weather radar, and I'm going up to the top to keys and options, and I'm selecting pressure, and then I'm zooming out slightly. So at this point, I'm essentially trying to be an amateur meteorologist, but it is genuinely really, really useful, and every farmer should be doing this. So we can see the high pressure system I talked about sitting over the Atlantic this week, and it gets gradually squeezed by a low front over the weekend before it returns in full force at the start of next week. So by Monday evening, this is the high pressure system sitting over the Atlantic Ocean. So we can take a lot from this image alone. Because the winds rotate anti-clockwise around a pressure system, it's going to be pulling warmer air up from the south, which means we're likely to get more grass growth next week. Also, because it is a large high pressure system, we're gonna see much drier weather than we have got. And the final thing is that that high pressure system is going to move east, which means the weather should improve further into next week. And if we get really lucky, that high pressure system has a chance of lodging itself over the UK, blocking any low pressure systems that might be trying to head our way and sending them further north and giving us a prolonged dry spell at the start of September. And again, I am no meteorologist. I am essentially pretending I know something that I don't know anything about. <laughs> but having looked at these charts for a very long time, when I see a high pressure system like that, which seems really firm, rooted, a strong high pressure system over the Atlantic, that almost always brings two weeks of much drier weather. So hopefully that video helped. Hopefully I haven't said too much wrong. Once again, I am not an expert. I am not a meteorologist. I am just a farmer who has obsessively checked the weather forecasts for over a decade now. And I do get it right quite a lot. And that's not me saying that. I have quite a lot of people who will ask my opinion on what the weather is gonna do over the next week or two, which is kind of a good sign that I am good at reading a weather forecast. And hopefully you'll be using some of them tips over the next few weeks to try to capitalize on the last of the good weather that we'll probably see in 2024. Did I say the last of the good weather? I mean the first good weather we have seen in 2024. And you know what? I'm gonna ask ChatGPT for an outro because all of your suggestions have been rubbish. ChatGPT's outro is, um, I mean, it's not bad. It's just not my style, but I'll read it out to you anyway. Let me get my papers to shuffle. This is a very professional outro the wrote for me. That's all for today on Farm Theory News, where we combine the science of agriculture with the heart of farming. Join us next time as we continue to explore the stories that shape our fields, fuel our food, and feed our future. Until then, keep growing, keep learning, and keep the farm thriving. Thanks for tuning in, and see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days. Actually, you know what? That's actually not bad. Right, let me try one more thing. Make it funny.
the funny outro is even better. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to like edit one of these out. Um, I might just put both in. I don't know. And that's a wrap on today's episode of Farm Theory News, where we sow the seeds of knowledge and harvest the good stuff so you don't have to. Remember, whether the cows are in the field or the chickens are plotting, we've got your back. Until next time, keep your tractors running, your crops sunning, and your neighbors guessing how you are always so informed. Thanks for watching, and may your crops be as hearty as your sense of humor. <laughs>